Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today we're going to talk about the container connector for OpenShift. And we have container connector for Mesos and Cloud Foundry as well, but we're going to cover the implementation for OpenShift. You can look into details for the other ones. But what container connector is, is it allows you to automate the provisioning of ingress L4 services and automate ingress L ingress L7 services. And big IP configurations are deployed from OpenShift. Um, or you know, you could do that from Kubernetes as well. But uh, the container connector works for both OpenShift and Kubernetes. And so the application deployments use metadata, uh, config map, ingress routes from, from within OpenShift uh, to reference the big IP configuration. And Container Connector translates that metadata for the big IP configuration. So important is that your configuration uh, information deployed from the OpenShift environment, not the other way around. And so um, what you get with, and I'll draw kind of this up here real quick. You have your node, and say this is node one and node two. Within this, of course, you have your different app services and pods in these. And then you have your container connector, which we'll make pink in here. So this is your, of course, the um, container connector runs on every node. And then you have your big IP, whether it's a VE or whether it's hardware, this, we can say big IP or the virtual edition of big IP, these run outside of the uh, OpenShift environment because um, big IP is not containerized. And, and so that communication uh, happens here. Of course, your, uh, your orchestration tools talk to the container connector, and then if you have uh, any kind of analytics services, um, can go there as well. And so you can very easily, with the container connector, uh, configure that ingress control for big IP with app routing, traffic policy creations, health monitoring, uh, allows you uh, to configure availability and to scale across Kubernetes uh, container environments. It allows you to subscribe to the OpenShift events that will automatically uh, allow you to create new or scale applications, um, uh, scale up or scale down. And then of course that uh, traffic visibility as well for, for your analytics. And so what does that look like um, on the network? Well, like what are the, the network pieces actually happening? And if you look at a, like a traditional website, you have Joe user, uh, let me give him some legs, and he comes into the big IP, and then you go to a traditional um, server. And, and so you have some IP, so let's just do 1.1.1.1 colon 80, and that's the VIP listening here on the big IP. And then you have a traditional pool, let's say that's 10.1.1.1, with uh, port 80. And traditionally, this is all static in nature, and the routing is, is fairly, uh, fairly uh, traditional. You can route through, you, can, you could enable SNAT if you had a, a, a one uh, network topology, but not a whole lot of rocket science going on here. Load balancing makes sense because you're going to static IPs, uh, static ports, and, and knowing how that load balancing uh, works is, is, pretty, um, is pretty well known. When you come into a Docker environment or a container environment, we'll talk about Docker, uh, containers have their own networking. And so they have, um, let's talk about uh, like built-in Docker first. And, and the way that you would use this uh, with, with Kubernetes is uh, with node port. And so uh, let's assume the client side is already over there. We have, again, your big IP. The client comes in this way, and you're going to go to 
one of two nodes and say this one is um, x dot x dot x dot 100 port is 33,001 and say this is x dot x dot x dot 101 and also 33,001 and you are load balancing here to the cube proxy. So KPXY, that is not very visible. I'll make it a little better here. Not much better. But you're load balancing there to the cube proxy. You're not load balancing to your actual uh, note or your actual pods. And so if I have a pod on this one and a pod here, when that request comes in here, this cube proxy is going to load balance that. And when that request comes down here, it's going to load balance that. So when you use, and this is node port configuration, when you use this, you lose the visibility of uh, your backend environment. You're, you're shifting your load balancing, some of your load balancing decision making to cube proxy rather than keeping it where you have or maybe where you want all your visibility. So your persistence, your visibility, your, uh, your point of control for load balancing, you know, not all of it shifts, but enough of it shifts to where you don't really have a clear picture here of, of what's going on with your, your distribution. And so it's, it's an option if you don't have any SDN because there's no requirement for SDN with this, but you do lose that persistence in, in back end. And so with, with this configuration, um, Big IP is outside of your Kubernetes uh, cluster environment. So if we were to draw a box around where OpenShift and Kubernetes lives in this, you know, Big IP is outside of that. The Big IP controller, however, um, exists inside. And so like we drew up over here, you have your container connector is sitting in here. And so any kind of, of uh, distribution of these node ports is, is still going to come back to Big IP. And that rest, of course, you have your, uh, your Kubernetes master sitting over here in the cluster somewhere. So your master where your uh, KAS API is running. Um, that is going to be, you're going to have your communication this way and of course from here over to um, your, uh, your API master. Um, and, the, and so the container connectors talking, this is your, your pink is your control traffic and the orange here is your, your data traffic. And so that's node, part, node port, the big IP controller is talking both directions, to the big IP to set up services, to the API master to be able to uh, glean the configuration uh, internally to be able to share that data. And so let's move on to the cluster um, setup. And, and this is similar from an object perspective, but now we're going to introduce uh, VXLAN and, and what it introduces into the equation. And so in this case, we have our pod back here, and we still have the Q proxy is there. We'll, uh, well, actually, I made that square, so let's make that the same. So KPXY and the same. Okay, so Q proxy is there. But with VXLAN, we're able to have that SDN overlay, and now we can bypass Cube Proxy um, and load balance, put all the, um, the load balancing algorithms here, and we can send traffic directly to, or we can address traffic directly to uh, those pod entities. So, you know, with, uh, with our external addresses here, we can actually directly address this. Um, so, Let's say that's 1.1 and 1044, 1.2. And 
And, uh, and so that uh, gives you that direct persistence and visibility, lo load balancing algorithm uh, control up here at the big IP. And, and this is still, you have your OpenShift environment is here, but this SDN overlay means you're having tunnels actually from big IP here into your container environment. And so those uh, tunnels is where this SDN, and uh, in this case, VXLAN, and you can use the native uh, VXLAN that's in OpenShift, or you could use Flannel VX, uh, VXLAN. Alternatively, you could do pod routing with like Calico BGP, but we're not gonna cover that here. Um, but if you wanna go directly uh, to your pods, you, you can't use the node port, you have to do something like VXLAN or, or Calico BGP. And of course your, your API control is the same in this environment or this environment. You have your, uh, your container connector, I should write that CC in there. You have your container connector in there and that's your, your API uh, traffic between all these services coming back up here to, uh, to master. And so that is, in a nutshell, uh, what the F5 Container Connector uh, brings to the table for you. Um, it, it equips you to plug in your F5 infrastructure into uh, an OpenShift Kubernetes. Again, you could do Mesos and, and uh, Cloud Foundry as well, but this is kind of the, the OpenShift implementation of that and uh, and and all of this uh, works very well it's it's very simple actually I, I, I did a lab when I was at agility a couple weeks ago and and it's just amazing how click of a button and uh, the event that hits on the OpenShift wire immediately uh, built out a, a, a big IP configuration for me and a scale 10 instantly brought up another eight um, uh, pods for me and auto configured it into my big IP. So it's, uh, it's great if you want to play around with it. There's, there's labs out there to do that on Cloud Docs and I highly suggest you uh, go dig in, learn more about this stuff. And uh, if you have any questions for us, drop them in the comments. If you like this video, uh, click subscribe up in the corner and uh, we'll see you out there in the community.